Hi and welcome. So this time around we are back looking at the Harbor Freight 20 ton press. And uh, one of my viewers came up with an interesting question that I'm interested in the answer to, which is, can this press actually put out 20 tons or 40,000 pounds of force? And that's a very good question. I have no idea. So what I did was I acquired a 100,000 pound load cell. And with this load cell, we can push it between the, uh, the ram and the plates and the press plates and measure the force. Uh, but first, I've got to take this 4140 stock over here and uh, make some press plates out of it and thread it with one and a quarter 12 threads, one for each side so that I have something to press against because I don't want to damage the delicate and ground surfaces that are the pressing portions of it. I, I don't know what you call these, uh, top and bottom. So I would ultimately like to make a permanent home for this in the top part of the press, but I haven't figured out exactly how I want to do that yet. I have a nut of the same fret threads as this that I can use to check my threads on the lathe since we're going to single point these. I don't have a die that large. Um, heading back over to the press, in the future, I think I'd like to remove this whole top portion here, add a reinforce, reinforcing bar across this, because as I will show you it later, uh, this has bent a little bit. It is, it is up in the middle uh, by a tiny amount. So um, what that will do is force this whole pressing assembly to go lower, and I will have to lean over more to use the press, but I need to make up about five or six inches of space right here uh, to fit the load cell up here with a press plate on top and a plate on bottom. So it won't be trivial. I haven't exactly figured it out and I want to make sure I don't compromise the strength of this. So I think I'm going to look for a support plate that will go all the way across to disperse some of this force from the middle to the edges. Anyways, let's uh, head over and get started on the lathe and make those press plates for the load cell. All right, so over here on the lathe, and I've got my three pieces. First off, I put the three-jaw chuck in because there's not going to be any operations where I reverse it where I need to make sure about concentricity. Right now, I'm just going to face all these six sides of these three pieces. One of these pieces is to replace this, which is my adapter piece that goes on my uh, hydraulic press. So the, the uh, ram is right, fits in here, gets tied down with this set screw, and then I've got different pieces that I can put on, only one I've made so far that fit on the bottom. But I just want to make a flat presser piece, so that's what this one's going to be. I need to hollow it out like this one. Then I've got two pieces here that are the uh, load cell uh, press plates that one goes on each side. So I need to uh, face all of these six pieces off, and once I'm done with that, then uh, uh, like on this guy, one side will be flat and it'll already be done. And then the other side, I will need to put the indentation. Uh, these two guys will have a flat side on each. And then the other side will have a one inch or so threaded section. And uh, that's where we're headed. So I'm going to do some facing real quick and we'll move along. Okie doke. So let's see how this stuff uh, faces. I'm really kind of curious actually because uh, I think it's going to be pretty hard. One way to tell, actually, is if you get a really nice surface finish without taking a massive uh, feed rate, this is uh, 7,000th the revolution. Um, with my experience with 4140, especially longitudinally, is you get a lousy surface finish unless you take a really big bite, or it's pre-hardened. Then you get a great surface finish. Must be the grain structure, the way it works. Uh, this wasn't terrible. All right, let's uh, chamfer this and flip it over. All right, so I've uh, faced and chamfered the three parts, and uh, now we are going to, we're gonna start with this guy and just make the presser foot for the ram first, and uh, then we'll move on to these two guys. Okie doke, so we're not gonna put this uh, little uh, indented portion, build the indented portion on this guy here. We're gonna go about 5 eighths to 3 quarters of an inch depth. I haven't really decided yet. It's not really critical, and uh, we're going to start with the drill bit, then we're going to work to an end mill to get a nice flat bottom and basically remove a lot of the material quickly. Alrighty, so I've never tried this big an end mill this way. Uh, we're going to go to a full slow here, uh, which is about 70 RPM. 
and uh, we're going to come in pretty gently. Oops. So the trick to finish this, since there was a tremendous amount of force, even though it wasn't having to cut the center, was to use a crescent wrench with the ER32 nut to actually tighten the collet as much as I could and uh, use lube. Boy, once it uh, got past the drill bit part uh, and it tried, had to take a bigger bite, it became really problematic. Huge amount of force. I was very impressed. So anyways, I was able to get it done and I had to increase the speed a little bit. Going too slowly was catching and that was a bigger problem. So I sped it up just a little bit to about 180 RPM and that seemed to work pretty well. Now we can bore the rest. First bite, we're just gonna try 50,000, see how that goes. Here's the finished press piece that's going to go on the ram and it's such a snug fit that uh, it almost doesn't need a set screw to hold it in place because it wants to stay in place all by itself. All right, so one part down, I'll have to finish it on the mill, but uh, two to go. So another trick I learned from uh, Adam over at A-Bomb 79 that is even with a self-centering scroll chuck that uh, as you're tightening, if you go around to all the different sides of the scroll, you can get the forces a little bit more symmetrical and uh, it'll tend to uh, hold a little bit better, uh, I, closer to center, I guess, um, because you're, you're trying to get even forces on all sides of the scroll rather than just cranking really hard on one side, which may cause a little bit distortion. Uh, I'm not sure, but anyway, it seems to work pretty well. So here's the 100,000 pound load cell and we're gonna be doing some uh, one and a quarter 12 threads, single pointed, and uh, we're gonna give about one inch of threads. Uh, the top could take a lot more than that. The bottom can do about one and a quarter. So we'll do them both about one inch of threads because really the threads aren't holding the force so much as the face is on the other sides. So we gotta make sure we have a good flat face. We're just gonna reduce this diameter down to the major diameter, which is somewhere between 1.2368 and 1.2482. So this might be a bit aggressive. We have to take off so much material that I'm gonna try and take off 100 thousandths at a 7 thousandths of revolution feed rate at this speed. It may be better to slow it down, I don't know, but I got such a long way to go. Oh, I can hear it uh, bog down a little bit. Slowed it down a little bit here. 300 RPM. Now the chips aren't coming out quite as blue, although they still are blue. Hundred thousandths total depth of cut, seven thousandths of revolution feed rate. Very nice finish. Got to be careful when I get to the end. I broke the carbide because I let it run collide. At this feed rate, it's a problem. This is a pass. The final pass here, hitting the final dimension, taking off twenty-three thousandths with a slow feed rate. And look at the uh, surface finish go to hell. It is much better with high high feed rate, uh, large bites, or at least large bites. Very interesting, this stuff.
chamfer. A little bit for that edge and a lot for this edge because this is the bolt side or the threaded side. We're going to do the back relief. We're going to try this at high RPM see if it works. i got to go in about 100 thousandths here. And I'm going to lock my uh, longitudinal travel so that it won't move. Actually, let's see if I can get in a little further. There we are. We need to go in a total of 100 thousandths. Next up, single point threading. So we're all set up here. I got the thread gauge and everything aligned, got the square, got this at 29 and a half degrees. And uh, just in case you were wondering, um, this thread gauge did not originally work with these lay down carbide inserts. It would have been fine with a high speed steel that uh, you know had a fair amount of uh, length to it or one of the pre-done carbides that are pretty long 60 degree. But uh, this guy, uh, it would bottom out before it would reach the bottom of this guy. So I popped it in the mill and moved a, removed a little bit of material off the top. Now it works fine, but uh, just in case you have the same problem. There we go. Perfect. And let me get my thread gauge and just make sure that we're all good. And we are right on the money. Uh, these threads aren't quite cut deep enough yet to uh, really get this to engage, but they're lining up nicely. Another 10,000 steps of cut. Each time I'm re-zeroing the cross slide and then moving the compound in a little bit, if you're not quite familiar. those threads out. We're going to take our pitch mic here, thread pitch mic, and uh, see what measurement we get. Eight, nine. That uh, should be right in there. Should be a pretty tight fit. This is why I got the nut. Oh yeah. Great fit. Perfect. Yeah, no slot. All right. One down, one to go. Just going to clean these threads up real quick, and we'll move on to the next part. So here's spinning on. I know you can't see the thread side. It's a really good fit. So what I want to make sure is that this guy, you can just dial it right up until it bottoms, and there we go. Very nice. Awesome fit. No rock at all. So we just need to make the other one, and we'll be good to go. All right, so we have all our parts completed now. These two guys are gonna be the press faces for the load cell. This guy is gonna be the press face for the ram on the hydraulic press, which we'll go and install right now. So as long as we're here, we're just gonna thread these guys down. And the threads aren't actually holding the weight. It's the flanges, the face of the flanges that's holding the weight, as you can see from the side here, that mates up. Um, I've already uh, played with this a little bit and they unscrew really easily. And I think if you put 40,000 pounds on the threads, uh, maybe they wouldn't unscrew so easily. So uh, I think we're good to go. So we're going to take this load cell over to the hydraulic press and uh, put it between the press plates on the bottom and the ram. I also need to install this piece on the ram. So I'm going to go do that and I'll bring you right back. About the uh, load cell, I wanted to give a shout out to Loadstar Sensors because I bought my load cell off of eBay used for a very uh, inexpensive price. And uh, this is the data sheet for it. And I called them up and they were really helpful over the phone. They even gave me access to download free software to find out what the output pressure, the pressure output is of the load cell and uh, told me about calibration and how the uh, interface box works and uh, offered to help me out with anything I need. And considering they didn't sell it to me originally, I'm just a rebuyer. Uh, I think that's really cool. So give them another shout out. Thank you very much, guys. All right. So here's our setup. Over here is the computer that will be reading pounds force on the load cell. Over here we have the hydraulic press with the uh, load cell mounted on the press plates. And here is the 
the new foot for the arbor. And here is the load cell with its two pieces we made for that. And then up here, I've added an additional thing because I've noticed something here is that, uh, see this? The press is deforming. And so uh, we're gonna zero this guy out and we are gonna look at deformation based on force applied. And then we're gonna see how much it comes back or doesn't come back. And that'll be very interesting because uh, if we go beyond plastic deformation and uh, bend this thing out of shape, then uh, that's uh, really not good. And you can already see it already has been and I've done some experiments already. All right, so we're about ready. We're gonna start applying some force to this guy and see what happens. We're at the load cell. The load cell's got zero pounds force on it right now and this thing is really touchy, but uh, we're zeroed on the deflection on the top bar. So we're about to make contact down here. And uh, there we go. There's our first thousand pounds. Thousand pounds already has it at two thousandths deflection. Now let's give All it right, a We're gonna take pull. one full pull here. That's uh, seven thousandths deflection at 3,500 pounds force. And here we are hitting seven thousand pounds force approximately at a 12 thousandths deflection. And now we're at 25,000, so 12,000 pounds. So another thing to note is that my lever arm is much longer than the original. The original came out to about here. So that means I've got much more mechanical advantage to get to this final force that we're interested in. So we're at about 37 thousandths deflection and 20,000 pounds force roughly. and 52 thousandths deflection, 26,000 pounds force or so. Uh, and 33,000 at 67,000 pounds force. Yeah, that's getting hard. Uh, we're at 39,000, 38,000 going down a little bit. I, I think the hydraulic fluid leaks back a little bit because it's going down. Uh, we're at 78 thousandths. Let's see if we can get to 40. And there we are, 41,000 and dropping. So it doesn't stay for long. About 83 thousandths deflection. And the pressure is continuing to drop. So you can see the bend here. It's rather significant. And when I release all of the pressure, lo and behold, 9 thousandths, 8 thousandths uh, of bend in this guy. So this press really wasn't designed for the full 40, for, uh, 40 thousand pounds for any amount of time uh, because you can see the deflection now if I come back a little here, you can see the bend in it. I can illustrate it a little bit better by setting this guy on there. So the Harbor Freight fret press is capable of 40 thousand pounds for short periods of time, uh, not long periods of time because it tends to leak back and on top of that, it is bending. So they didn't make it strong enough to hold 40,000 pounds force for, well, for any time at all. Before we go, here's one more look at how much this press is deformed. Now, I've taken it up to 40,000 pounds in preparation for this video like three or four times, that's it. And uh, take a look at the permanent deformation here. That's a precision straight edge, and it was more or less straight when I uh, got it. So you can see now how far off it is. So if you take this thing to full uh, pressure, first of all, you're not gonna be able to do with the handle that comes with it. You'll need a longer handle like I've got there because that was really tough. And uh, second of all, it won't hold that pressure for long because it leaks backwards uh, into the reservoir. And finally, the uh, whole th frame uh, deforms. And I don't know, at some point you might actually make the whole thing fail. So. That was an interesting video. Thanks for watching. Hope you find it useful. Hope to see you next time.